Welcome back to our very first Hardcore Nuzlocke. Today, we're going to be taking our first randomized Hardcore Nuzlocke in on Pokemon Fire Red. Because, well, this is our most known in a comfortable game. Because it would be stupid to go to a game you don't know at all and try to attempt your first Hardcore Nuzlocke. So, we decided to go into this. And we actually had a pretty easy start for the most part. When we go to choose our starters, we have a very solid option of Doug Trio, Vile Plume, or our good buddy Raichu. Now, we could have chose Raichu or Mag our buddy Doug Trio. They would have been really good options. But, with the ground weakness of Raichu, an undiverse moveset that Dugtrio just does not have, we end up going with Vileplume. Plus, that was a smart choice for a lot of other reasons. See, with Hardcore, there's a lot of extra rules that come into play versus a regular Pokemon Nuzlocke. In Hardcore Nuzlocke, you cannot use healing items while you're in a battle itself, in a Pokemon battle at all. You're just not allowed to. So, there's a couple things that you need, and that would be healing moves. Healing moves are the easiest way to actually heal during battle, and the only way, because you can't use anything in battle to heal, nothing but held items and things like giga drain or recover those are your best way to get through this plus starting off with vile plume also gives us stun spore which makes it really easy to capture pokemon so we get our pokeballs we start our nuzlocke and we get training our pokemon so it goes off pretty well at the start with having vile plume makes it a lot easier because it gives us just a big big advantage so we don't have to worry about healing outside of battle we catch ourselves a kakuna in our first route which makes it nice having a bug type on our side but that kind of continues when we end up running into a vulva beat for our next encounter as well but that's all good by the time we end up getting to route two we run into our last encounter for viridian forest which is poliwag who comes into big play because when we get to viridian forest for our encounter over there it's a really really big play for us because we actually end up running into a salamance for our encounter so because of hypnosis on the pog a poliwag it actually gives us the big chance to actually capture the salamance because without the hypnosis and only pokeballs it would have been a much lower chance to capture salamance overall so he is a big key to our team giving us our ace Pokemon of the squad. So we continue to train everyone up equally as possible, heading into the Brock gym fight. Solid Pokemon overall. He only had to end up having a Pidgey and a little Lozad. So even without Salamence, Brock's gym would have been a wipe of cake. So we get to our encounter for our Magikarp and it actually turns out to be buying a Scizor. So after we get our Scizor, we head to Cerulean, pick up ourselves a Starmie, and then we have ourselves our nice old rival battle with AK Gary Oak, but we called him Green by accident. Going to this, I was a lot worrieder than I really should have been because between Scizor, Salamence, and Vileplume, we had the levels in the Pokemon advantage. She led off with the Silcoon, giving us not much worries to really worry about our rival. And then we already know he only has a Doug Trio. Product's kind of iffy, but because we have our boy Leafy, our Vileplume, or Salamence overall, it was really easy to get through these Pokemon because we just had a much higher base attack or the type advantage overall. After we finished off our rival, we get through the entirety of the Golden nugget bridge and we get to route 25 where we run into our next encounter before bills a milo tick milo tick was absolutely fantastic not only was this just a better water type than having starmie who was a water psychic type and all right overall but he could learn recover as well as starmie so it made him a much better pokemon so since he could learn recover we instantly started training him getting milo tick is up as much as possible being a water type with that much hitting power and a special defense tank it was a much better placement to focus on milo tick than to ever try to focus on Starmie. So after that, we decide to get Milotic up, head into the gym, ready to get our second gym badge against Misty. So we take down all the trainers with our boy Salamence. Going into the gym battle, I was a lot more worried because this was the second battle. You know, the first couple are, can be really easy, but if you have the wrong mons, it can kind of send it out of the way. So we, we go into the battle being ready, and it was not that big of a deal. Leading off with Azumarill, Misty we knew wasn't going to be as big of a threat. Azumarill usually is huge power, which makes it somewhat of a big deal to fight sometimes but without it in randomizes it's completely useless it can't do any damage at all so it's just really annoying to sit here and deal with as misty tries to heal up the azumarill the entire time knowing because the second pokemon she has in her belt to battle us with wasn't the strongest overall so once we take down the azumarill it was really easy to get through the last of a pokemon because it was once again just a low tag like her friend brock so maybe they're having a low tag clean or something i don't know but defeating misty that gives us our second gym badge and we can actually move on to actually getting more important things done so we make our way to the next town where we eventually hit the ss and for our second rival battle going into this i was a lot chiller we led off once again with the bug type against this guy i wasn't worried at all after the last rival battle it really put me at ease especially with our team so we send our scissor back in because we're kind of focusing right now we really want scissor to get up our levels because we want him to be a lot better of a pokemon we have no stab moves at the moment outside of leech life which just isn't good so we get through this rival battle without really any issue because the only pokemon to worry about with meganium is 
in the Doug Trio, which we already had two uh, encounters for, for both separately. So it was no big deal to get through these Pokemon, especially with Sizzle. He resisted all of them anyway. So we defeat Gary in our rival battle and we head up to the captain to help him out with his little sickness. And then we get our cut and we can actually head into Lieutenant Surge, which was, you know, this is my least favorite gym out of all of them here in Fire Red because this stupid puzzle right here has got to be my least favorite puzzle. I mean, you just sit here and just spam buttons. Like I've got tricks and patterns to it every single time and it just never works out. It's just a complete luck game. You know, it's all RNG to get it. But once you get there, you finally get to battle Surge and then we lead off with our boy Vileplume, which does really well for us until we realize that we can't switch out because of Arena Trap. Because it's a psychic type, this really puts us into trouble. So we try to stick in with Mega Drain, giving us our HP back for everything, but it was too fast and it ended up taking down Vileplume. Losing Leafy was a bit of a struggle. It really, really hurt us in the long run. So we decided to send out our Scizor instead to get this going because we resist it as a bug type. We don't have anything super effective, but being a physical attacker and leech life being good on Kadabra, it came out on top. Once again, we have a Starmie, another psychic type. So we continue with our Scizor using Pursuit and Leech Life, hoping that we could get through. Now Surge tries to fight back with a couple super potions, but Scizor was a bit too strong. It ends up just pushing through because the only thing left seems to be an electrode. We decide to go ahead and probably send back in our Milotic because Electrode has never been one to really worry about for electric types attack. We can't heal in battle and with our boy low Scizor, we don't want him to deal with any special moves because he's a physical tank and not a special tank. So we send in Milotic because it's going to wipe through. We don't have to worry about anything at most Sonic Boom or Explosion, but our could take it. After that, we head over to the continue area towards Rock Tunnel where we're going to get our next encounter over in Route 10, I do believe. So we get there and it is a Grumpig. Grumpig was actually a really decent addition for us. Not only is it good because Grumpig is a psychic type, it's a Pokemon type and we don't have at the moment, but it's a bit of a bulkier Pokemon. It's not got anything crazy, but we capture that Pokemon and we head into Rock Tunnel. Once we get through Rock Tunnel, we eventually come out onto Lavender Town where we don't get any encounters, so we head left and we get our next encounter before Saffron and Celadon, a Pupitar. We capture the Pupitar, which was a great addition to our team. Adding that guy was a big, big importance. Getting a future Tyranitar, a possibility, was a massive key. So after that point, we decided to really train up Grumpig and Pupitar as much as possible. We really pushed them to try to get them as higher levels that we could without pushing the level limit, getting them equal to the team because we know we had a lot of big battles coming up. You know, outside of Saffron, we had the entirety of Celadon City where we would have to fight Giovanni and Erica both for the fourth badge and to continue on. And then after that, we'd have to fight Giovanni again and as well as Koga and everything else. So we had a lot of stuff coming up and this is usually the point in the game where I got a bit iffy, you know? Every time you go in to fight Giovanni is usually where I get nervous because those are usually the points I lose. Giovanni or one of the very last rival battles. Giovanni's scary. You fight him three or four times and he always has something up his sleeve but randomizers make it either a lot easier or a lot worse most of the time because you don't know what he has but he always has solid levels and that's something that you can't just prepare for outside of being equal levels. Once we finally finish up with training we get into the point where we decide to head into Celadon City which was really really smart of us because one we had another encounter there where we could get our encounter from the Eevee spawn. So we decide to head up to get Eevee and it actually turns out to be our Laron. Laron was perfect for us. You know, it was a steel type. We already had one, but it was steel rock giving us a lot of resistances that we didn't have before and a tank mon. So we take that Pokemon and we also decide to go ahead and see if we could get another encounter and Chuppet decided to be a disappointment. So we went ahead and get Fly for our Salamence. See, Fly was really, really good for a lot of reasons. Now, not only was Fly good for obviously flying around the map but we didn't have a stab move on our salamance with no dragon moves yet we decided to put on fly on him giving a physical stab flying type move which was really really powerful and would come in really handy for erica so once that we decided we needed to train up Laron, so we head to the team rocket base to train up against the levels under there because they give them more experience in the wild pokemon and they weren't too high of a level as this is only the first team rocket base you take on so it made it a lot easier for us we pick up leftovers that we can add to our milotic for our tank pokemon that means we can get continue grinding at levels for our Pokemon to get even higher and higher. After grinding levels for a while, we finally decided to go into the gym and take on some of Erica's trainers, not only for the money and the experience, but because we do need to get, you know, at the actual four gym badge at some point or another. After getting through all the trainers, we finally take on Erica, who was a bit of a toughie if we hadn't gotten a fly, if I was completely honest. So they lead off with Cardot and putting our Pupitar at the back line, not really being able to do anything with it, which really sucks. So we decide that the, probably the best move is sending Grunting, see if we get it, some attack in, but we realized that was bad because it was dark versus Psychic. 
psychic. So we send in our Salamence, our go-to if anything goes wrong. And because of Fly, we were able to take down the Crawdon with no issues whatsoever because he doesn't have much defenses overall. The Protect made it a little difficult, but it wasn't much to worry about. But after that, Heracross and Fortress were both bug weak to flying and fighting types, so also weak to flying. So it made it really easy just to plow through the rest of Erica's team with just my Salamence and Fly. So once again, we fell back on Salamence's back, giving us the win for our fourth badge. Once we defeated Erica for the Rainbow Badge, it was time for us to take on Giovanni, which was a bit nerve-wracking. So when we got to Giovanni, he led off with a dangerous Pokemon. Leading off with Salamence was a big key for us to know that he wasn't playing around. So we set up a couple Iron Defenses. He decided to lock us into this, which was really bad. We couldn't get out of it, but it was just raising our defense against the slacking anyways. So that was really, really good for us. Overall, this was pretty easy. After we got our defenses up, we just kept using Metal Claw. Not only does it have stab on our Pokemon, but it was the best move for us to use, but it also has a chance to raise our attack stat, which, you know, didn't work out exactly right away, but eventually came in handy. After a while, we were finally able to take down the slacking, as annoying as it was with slack off and the fact that we can't heal ourselves, we finally took him down, but Giovanni was just a pushover after that. See, once we took down slacking, he only had two Pokemon left, and these Pokemon weren't real big threats to deal with. See, these Pokemon were really, really easy because it was a level 29 Krabby, which was easily taken down by our good old Grumpig, and after that, it only stood between us was a Spearow, so it was easy to get through that one as well. Without that out of the way, we were easy to finish off Giovanni and make our way to Silph Code Tower, or Ghost Tower as it's called. I always get the names mixed up, but anyways, we have the Silph Code thingy, and we can head to Ghost Tower. Make it to Lavender Town, where we once again defeat our rival. We don't have to worry about him. Luckily, he's not been much of a problem so far throughout this Nuzlocke, so we've been really lucky on that point. We get to here, and we just do a bit of training, trying to make sure we get Pupitar up as much as possible, wanting that T-Tar. But after pushing our way through, we finally get to the top where we run into a bit of a problem with some of the Team Rocket Grunts. We weren't expecting to have some of these Pokemon. A Reg Ice comes in our way, so we decide to do what we could do and switch out to Rocky to defend against them with our defenses. Superpower was quite effective, taking down our Laron, so we lost one of our good Pokemon that we had just received, but it wasn't one of our aces luckily, but it was still a stinger to take that loss to the team. After all that and losing our Pokemon later on, we decided to go for our Snorlax encounter and see what we could grab up and add to the team real quick because we knew they'd be level 30 and it actually turned out to be an Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl was giving me a lot of trouble in the past, so I knew it was going to be a good Pokemon for us to pick up and add to the squad. So we capture it and we name him Pterodactyl as a joke as Pterodon or Pteranodon. So that was kind of funny, but it was also idiotic. Anyways, let's move on. With nothing left to do in Celadon, we decided to finally take on Saffron City. So we go to the Silph Co. HQ and we just go through all the floors out, training all of our Pokemon, getting them as equal level as possible, mainly just preparing for this next Giovanni fight, making sure that we could continue our game and making sure that we just actually had a chance. So the best thing we could do was literally go floor by floor, get all the items we can and just battle all the Team Rocket members for as much XP as possible. We finally make it to the top floor to fight Giovanni once again, which I was really nervous for this battle. He leads off with the Lickitung, so it wasn't a big threat right off the bat. We tried to use Rock Slide with Pupitar to get him more XP, but it just didn't work out. He disabled our Rock Slide. We go in with Bite a little bit, and they end up trapping us with Wrap, which was not fun for us. So we're going to use probably Thrash because we want the most power as possible. That two hits really helps out. Luckily, Confusion didn't lock us into a third one, allowing us to switch out to another Pokemon. We go into Milotic knowing Polyroll really can't do anything, so hopefully we can just take it down with a little bit of Water Pulse and some Confusion on our side, so it wasn't a big deal. After that, though, they decide to switch into Atropius, who gives us a kind of an issue because we don't have an exact counter to it. We go out to Salamence, but they world was into our good old Charmeleon, who we just never got a chance to really use. We send Salamence back in, and we go with a Dizzy Punch or a Fly, and it, neither one just seems to want to connect. So we finally get a Fly off, finishing off the Tropius, and then comes back in that Poly World. We just keep up Fly at this point, you know? With this point, we just fall back onto Salamence again, as we keep doing in this Nuzlocke, and he kind of just rides us out through the rest of this battle without any issues. Issues. Fly seems to be the run to get through it every single time. With his speed, he's even though Salamence is a slow Pokemon, he seems to be outspeeding most of the Pokemon we come across. After that, we headed over to Articuno Spawn and we captured ourselves a Reggie Ice for our legendary Pokemon. As nice as capturing Reggie Ice for a legendary as it was, it was a bit disappointing to get Reggie Ice. At any Reggie, actually, I don't like any of the Reggies, but Reggie Ice out of all of them was the most disappointing to get for our legendary Pokemon, so it wasn't the most celebrated conclusion to getting a legendary. At this point, we decided to 
head over to Cinnabar Island to get working not only on the 7th gym badge, but to hopefully go capture a second legendary Pokemon over Regice, because it was so disappointing in the first time. So, we head into the Pokemon Mansion on the island, and we kind of just leave our encounters at this point, you know? Each time we come into one, they usually haven't been worth it, so we keep discarding them, not capturing it. As stupid as that might be, if we white out, we still lose completely anyway. There is no continuing with the Pokemon in the box, so as part of it, the rules, it sucks, but it's just the game, so we can't continue. And with them Pokemon being lower levels than our current team, it just wasn't worth trying to keep switching Pokemon in and out to training them. We had a solid team. After doing everything else, we finally started to make our way to get to Gym Leader Blaine, and coming up on the fight, we weren't prepared what was coming for us. Leading off the fight was really easy. We had our Pupitar against a Snubble, which seemed like a really easy win, so we continued using Rock Slide to take down the Snubble, no big deal, but the Groudon that came up after was not ready for us, so we switched in on an EQ, losing most of our HP, so we go for Surf, hoping to take out the Groudon, but he lives. So, after this, we don't have much to do, so we decide to send in our Regice for our defenses, hopefully that he could take a hit and do some damage, but a Hyper Potion heals up the Groudon, and we find out the Super Power wasn't the most effective for this guy, so he ends up bulking up as we try to think of something to do with our Regice, and realizing that there wasn't much that we could do, we decided that we need to switch out. We go out to Grumpy, hoping that some special attack would be really good since he's building up his physical defense but once again we get one shot by eq and this seems to be a trend after this bulk up we kind of go into a bit of a downfall we tried to send in our boy salamence but ancient power takes him out as well after that we don't have much going for us salamence goes down so we try to bring in our boy sizzler he tries to do some damage but he also gets one k it ko'd after that we just have pupitar and regice regice we send in because pupitar we know is not going to do anything and even regice's defenses could barely take a single eq losing him as well leaves us just pupitar who's obviously leaked the eq and not fully evolved not having a chance to take on groudon so we do what we can but in the end groudon takes us out with the eq ending our first hardcore nuzlocke sadly we couldn't quite get to all the eight gems of the champion but it was a good one we hit that like button comment and subscribe if you guys did enjoy and i'll see you guys all next time rockstars peace peace